see what we got. Hold up. Now it's a live and it got the count up on it. And I'm still looking at the trees and the clouds obeying the command. Yeah, you're alive and free, man. Uh, Say, and and I was really thinking about that statement, alive and free. That statement got so many levels to it, bro. Mm -hmm. Tell me why you say that. Because... Them verbs, them not nouns. Alive, you know, man mean mind. Alive mean quickening. Right. Alive mean active. Alive mean action. Everybody, it's the difference between living and existing. We in the process of living because right now, being even just by being on this streaming and this broadcast, we describe an action. We alive, we not standing still, we nouns, we, we verbs, not nouns. So right, we actually right. alive, we actually making a difference. We actually touching not only people, places, and things, but we touching ourselves as well along the way. We are actually alive, we not existing. And we free, not just physically, we free mentally, spiritually, emotionally. We in that spot to where when God wanted to get a message to Moses, Moses had to get somewhere in his life in order to receive it. It just so happened it was in front of that burning bush. But he put himself in position to receive everything God had for him. And when he received it, he was able to act on it, which is a part of being alive, moving up on his command. So when you put them two together, you can't come up with nothing but alive and free. Because we're not in shockers no more. We're not being, not in physically. We physically free. We mentally free because we our actions lining up with our thought patterns. So the word within us is becoming flesh and manifested before men. And by being manifested before men, we uh, we become what the Christians call walking circumspectively, entertaining angels unaware, and don't even know. We don't even know the impact we can have on others. We don't even much know the magnitude of our words because we still in a learning process. We just have a, it's three stages of development, which we already know. And the first stage is that animalistic stage. And then that second stage is the level of consciousness. And that third stage, what we call the Mugmaina, we enter into that Mugmaina stage. But we had to go through the first stages of what we did with the animalistic nature because you never seen a lion, tiger, or bear ask for permission or forgiveness and they ain't scared of no murder cases. And if you put a lion on the, on the stand and ask him to testify, all he going to do is just keep going because it's in his nature. And that's what we were. We was in an animalistic stage at that time. But then when we elevated, when we finally got in a situation where we could elevate, then we become conscious aware to a certain extent but the applicate applicated that's where to come differently we weren't in the position to applicate it that's when we, we do, we're doing dirt and we say and something happened we say man something told me not to do that shit man something right. told me not to go that's that that's that conscious coming alive in our action man i should have followed my first mind yeah that's that Damn, one man, I tripped. yeah that's that, that one that come with both destruction Exactly, exactly. And see, it, it, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the, Amar, the Amari stage is what the animalistic stage is, is what we call it in Islam. And then once we elevate it to that second stage, that second stage, that's when we start getting that conscious. Damn, man, so I'm telling me not to go. Man, even if it's your girl, your girl might tell you, you might have that good feeling. They call it butterfly, but we call it warning before the destruction. Some people yeah. call it man following your first mind, but we call it the one before destruction. Some say some told somebody call, some people call it the angel on your right and the devil on your left whispering to you. Right. But we call the it the one and stuff. Exactly. Right. Some people they call it balance between the two consciousness. Exactly. No. Exactly. And see, 
And even if the wrong countries prevail, at least we at the stage where we could hear both of them now because there was a time we couldn't hear nothing but one-sided. And in that one-sided, we became so proactive and developed to where we can masters our craft with all kind of tools in our box, all kind of weapons at our full disposal. We had an influence, impact over a whole slew of people that we didn't even know. So when we orchestrate the plot, the plan, and put it into action, we putting everything together from the motor to the rack of pain. And we pulling it out properly. That's how we ended up with so much time because we was a master at our craft. We were the best at what we could do at doing wrong. And we got the high medal of honor, a life sentence, 40 some years, elbows. That was our master's degree. That proved that we was the best at what we do. And we got the and we got our reward for it. We earned that. We graduated with honors. Right. The top of our class. That's why we did 20, 22, 23 years. We earned that twenty that we earned that twenty-two year scholarship and attended every class and graduated to the fullest. But then in college, we started learning shit. And when we started learning and they'll like, okay, that's when that third that move Mahina woke up like, man, this ain't any more worth it. Being real and got too expensive. I can't I can't afford to be real no more. Because if you ask a hundred niggas what's their definition of real, you're gonna get a hundred different definitions. Everybody real in their own eyes. I ain't never seen a nigga call himself fake. And then you ask a man, okay, you real compared to what? I ain't calling you fake, but we just need something to compare it to. That's just like the bar. Okay, yeah, he say this, but it's that. Because if not, you won't have me looking for the finger when it really the thumb. So in them okay. stages, bro, that's when I mean alive and free. And we had to go through them necessary stages in order to get where we at. Therefore, when we say something, can't nobody argue with your experience because you tried testing and proving to be true. You know everything it is about wrong. Now let's get right a chance. So it's more stuff we don't know with it than we do know. And to be honest with you, bro, and I ain't that nigga on this screen that got more future than he got past right now. Cause we all in our forties. We all gave have our life to a system that don't give a damn about us. So we got more past. We got more past than we got future. And the little future we got left, we gotta be active in it. So when you say alive and free, that carries so much weight on so many different planes, levels, and phases to where the the average mind can't really comprehend the depths of that statement by itself. So if I say I'm alive and free, I understand that everything that come with being alive and free. And so now our actions, uh, our actions, speaking louder than our words, because the person can so because the person can say whatever he want to say, but when it's time to step up and domino, they gonna pass. They ain't got no sixes, trades, five blanks, fours, or aces. Period. And and and, right. and, 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 and and don't even know how to shake, shake. Don't know how to cuff. Don't know nothing. That's why them weapons, like I was just explaining in that last Zoom meeting I was in, they say, well, how can you, how do we know what you could do, gonna do right and excel and doing right? I say, because when I was doing wrong, I was a master at doing wrong. It's hard to find a nigga that know how to manipulate and do wrong. If I do wrong, good as we know how to do. And we graduated with honors and now I'm doing right. People think just because they doing right, they lose them same skill sets. Oh. Hold on real quick, I'll holler at you in a minute. Uh, people think, people think, huh? Here you go. People think that yeah, because they doing right, they lose that, huh? Here you go. Say, huh? Here you go. You welcome. Say, people think that yeah, because they doing right, they lose them school skill sets. They abandon that toolbox. They they throw away that manipulation. They throw away that con and craftiness. They throw away their whole school and turn back to a straight lame again. You the crazy man Dr. Martin Luther King ever marched for if you abandon your skill sets. Why? Because that's what got you through this life. Only thing you're doing is just taking the gun and pointing it a different way. But you still know how to manipulate. You still know how to be con and crafty, smart, sharp, peep game for a nigga even running. You just applicating it in the wrong way. Okay, I call it positive manipulation. To where I'm finna manipulate these niggas into doing right. I'm finna con their ass into getting a job. I'm finna trick their ass into being alive and free by any means. So don't never abandon your craft or your skill sets because you earned every tool in your box. You earned every tool in your box. You got every weapon at your arsenal. You like even in the Bible. I'm a Muslim, but the Bible say what fruits you ate of then that you ashamed of now. 
No. So when I say we alive and free, it because we got a whole array of weapons at our full disposal and so many different mindsets that coming together as one. And that's an unfair advantage to, to the wrong side of the game. We really stacked the deck. We built the dream team. We built the powerhouse. We done gathered all the super, we gathered all the superstars that have been through it and won championships and putting them all on the same team. That's just like the 84 Olympics. That was an advantage. You got Barclays, Jordan, Clyde Dressler, John Stockton's, Carl Malone, David Robertson's. You got all us on the same team shooting this, shooting at the same goal, same plan, same coming with the same mindset. Looking at striving for the same outcome, a W, a W. And the team ain't got to be built around me. I'm just glad to be on the roster because there's no way Michael Jordan could have won a championship if Luke Lonely didn't get one because he's on the same team. So if Luke Lonely didn't get a championship, that means there's no way Mike could have got one. Right. So I be Luke, I be Luke Long. I ain't tripping, home because I know ain't no way Rashid gonna win a championship without me. And guess what? I'm gonna be a man. I'm, I could take the ball a lot, and I could just get the rebound and play defense and pass it to you. You gonna score? Pass it to Sane. He gonna score. Pass it to Shabazz. He gonna score. And even pass it to whoever hosting the stream yard. He gonna score because one thing I learned when you got dudes striving in the same. And for the same direction, you have teammates that you don't even know exist yet until you put in a position like this to where you get to meet them. Because you got the whole universe working in your favor, just like when you're doing wrong. Niggas say, niggas say, man, I know who did it, but I ain't going to say nothing. And he don't say nothing, so he really say somebody on his team, and he don't even know it until late on, because the world, the life is meant to be lived forward and understood backwards. And understanding the backwards, that's when we equipped ourselves where, how they say, where you learn from your own experience. And that's one of the craziest things in the world. And I used to think niggas was lame because they didn't uh, 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 sell dope, shoot guns, ride, driving uh, stolen cars with a whole brick in the trunk, driving straight out of company loud enough so everybody in the world could see riding around looking for a casket to jump in, a police car to fill up. And I used to think that was crazy. And the normal people looking at us like, damn, them niggas crazy because they got a whole chop in the back seat with 14 bricks jamming NWA, fuck the police. And to us, that's normal. And to them, that's crazy. And to them, that's normal. But to us, we looking like, man, these people crazy. They just riding around and don't think they packing as a driver license and some insurance. They tripping. And that uh, just goes to show how we were talking about, that's how to show how we were dealing with mental illness, mental health awareness, because that's take a, uh, that take a hell of a mindset to get up in that mindset to where it's cool to go to sleep in a trap house full of quarters with guns in the wall, guns on the table, bologna sandwiches in the freezer, and, and, and these freaks coming in and out, putting our life on the line in the middle of the night. 3.30 in the morning, what we call the wee hours. And to us, that's normal. But it's normal because we in an animalistic state of mind. So we trying to, we ain't in the jungle trying to be no damn antelope. Now, nigga, we lions, tigers, and bears. And put us in that water. We sharks and piranhas. Cause we gonna run in packs. And everybody don't want to cool. Nigga, we got the, nigga, we got our own preacher in. We got our own choir that gonna come and pull up with that music. Jamming. And when they pull that thrill out, don't be looking for Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. So it did look a whole lot. It's Lee uh, Cook, man. Yeah. Yes, sir. Tell me who you are. Man, my name is Lee Clark. And the author of the real nigga blues. And uh it's not only an honor and a privilege to be part of this stream yard, the wreck yard, the live and free movement, but it also a benefit to me because when a person do something right, it benefits their own soul. Not every soul gonna come up struggling for itself, and this part of my struggle right now. We done done so much wrong. I done done so much wrong. Lee Clark, as a human being, walking flesh and blood, done so much wrong to where I made the seesaw tremendously unbalanced, and I'm just trying to balance the seesaw trying to do some good to try to outweigh that bad and if I could just tip the scale to get the seesaw at least halfway even on both sides because like I say even I got more past than I got future 
then okay, maybe that's when that grace and mercy kick in to where I might get where I need to be in the hereafter because that changed your whole mindset to where you start thinking ahead of this shit because I don't know, we was all striving to be millionaires, but I don't know one person, human being or a nigga that live longer than his money or his materials. We learned that back from King Solomon. We learned that back from the pharaohs. All that gold and all that stuff they used to ride around in, around their neck, and we got that from them. We got that from them. Who had more jewelry than King Solomon? He had marble flows that they thought it was glass. The woman pulled the skirt up because she thought she walking on water. I don't know, man, they got here balling that could do that, period. So it ain't nothing new. And then they rocking them dreadlocks so hard to where they saw one woman with dreadlocks. They thought it was snakes and started calling them Medusa. And that's how the myth started because they, they was unfamiliar with what dreadlocks was. But now we dreaded out the game with big trunk jury and everything. Ain't nothing new up under the sun. That's that same shit. And ain't man nigga don't outlive his money or his, or his possessions. Three things gonna follow you to the graveyard. Your money, and it going to return back to the living. Your family, and they going to turn back to the living. And your deeds, and that's the only thing going to stay in the grave with you. That's why when we pray, we pray that they grave be expanded and illuminated with light. And raise up on the day of judgment with a glow in their face, facing the east, and their eyes open. Because now we done got to the point to where we gained a greater understanding than what's just in front of us. It, it's, it's, we looking up, we looking up, the, we looking we ain't looking up the street. We looking down the road. Like when you just did that thing about the crossroads. Nigga can't be scared to make them decisions at the crossroad. And guess what? You can't go both ways. Because the, the uh, because uh, 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 gender confusion don't work at a crossroad. You can't uh, put uh, both, both, both sexes on a crossroad application and go both ways. No. You got to go one way and you got to be comfortable in your decision you make because every result after that, it's going to require actions. It's going to require accountability, responsibilities. So when that was a hell of a scenario you painted with that crossroad looking at them train tracks because they never ended and, and, and the depth of it goes so deep to where the eyes can't even much perceive it and the ears never heard it. Mm-hmm. And woulda, coulda, shoulda don't count as points in this game. Now, everybody talking about the game ain't chess, but check but how many niggas you actually know that actually got a chess board at home? How many niggas you know that actually got a checkerboard at home since the game is chess and not checkers? Nah, real spill. Yeah, man. And if you do play, if I play chess instead of checkers, I choose checkers. But if I play chess, then I'm a set my chessboard up, and I'm going to pull one piece off that chessboard. I might pull a nine and put that in my pocket for the whole day and say, I'm going to move like a knight through the day and see what I can accomplish and see if this here moves I make and earn its way back on the board. That's when then I could say the game is checked. Then tomorrow I'm going to come out and pull a bishop. I'm going just straight at this here. Then next week, I might next week I might pull a rook out, rook out because I'm going to move sideways and straight up. But I'm going to pull a piece out every day and put it in my pocket and make my moves according to that piece. So when I tell a nigga the game is chess, not chess, because I'm not going by what I heard. I'm going by what I'm living because I'm a verb, not a noun. And I choose to play checkers because on the checkerboard, everybody start out the same place and everybody could be a king. And plus the pieces only move sideways and that train you for the niggas that going to come at you sideways. And when we jump a nigga and a nigga get on that Mesa Dixon line, he holding the door open for everybody else to come across and be a king. So I choose checkers because we all could, we can all reach our full potential. But on chess, can't number one nigga be the king. The strongest thing to him is his hope. And he don't move one move at a time. And nigga says, cool, moving one move at a time. But when you got your plan together, you moving four or five moves at a time. Like you got the wreck yard, you got a live and free. Now you do a stream yard. Can't no king on the chessboard do that shit. He just going to move one move at a time. After this live and free shit, you going to shut out for the day. Ain't no stream yard. Ain't going to the gym. Ain't no going live. Ain't no pop boxing. Ain't no working out because that doesn't go outside of your one move capabilities. Right, right. 
We got to keep know. it moving. We got to keep it pushing. We constantly you gotta expanding. You got to use every weapon at your disposal. Every chance you get to use one of your weapons. Because when you were doing dirt, you, you didn't ask for permission or forgiveness. You're going to execute every weapon in your arsenal. You're going to use your looks. You're going to use your strength. You're going to use your mouthpiece. You're going to use your fighting capabilities. You're going to use everything you can to win at this certain project you aiming at. No matter what it is, inside or out. And when people graduate, they hate up in them penitentiary walls, nigga, yo, 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 jersey hung up in the raptures. That's why I hear when people mention your name, it carry a weight because your jersey hanging up in there. They done retired your jersey. Because you earned that. Ain't nobody gave you that shit. Now, whether you were playing chess or checkers, that's on you and how you executed that affect everybody. It must me because now your moves affected me. So even if you was playing checkers, chess, now you with a nigga that play checkers. So now what we finna do, we finna try to jump these niggas and move to the next space. And you could play chess and I'ma just uh, turn into a king and lock the Mason Dixon line down. And we gonna be the first niggas that com combine both of them together, then make a move. We playing checkers and chess and a nigga go to trip and we gonna pull that poker table out on there. Because at the end of the day, it's about trying to set that monopoly shit up to where we could take over the whole board and set up property and make moves, which you already doing because you got property down there all around Texas. You've been playing Monopoly. It's just about raising awareness of what game you was actually in. But you've been playing Monopoly. Now you graduated from that chess and chapter shit. You on a whole different level now. And that's something to strive for. And if a person ain't got nothing to strive for or don't have nothing in front of them, the way man, I'm finna try to reach this, then he going backwards in the world that's going forward. Nah, he trying to build his helicopter from the sky down. Nigga, you can't have roots and wings at the same time. I ain't never seen a flying tree or a planted bird. That's why you got niggas like Drake. He fly his wings high and he don't give a damn. He flying high. But he got some roots in that ground planet with Lil J. Because when niggas say something out of pocket, Lil J going to step up to the bat because his roots run deep. Nigga, you can't have roots and wings. You got to have the wings and somebody else got to have the roots. And y'all working on one accord. The two became the two can be one. And that's alive and free. Execution. And that's what we're in the process of doing. Execute. Execute. You, there's no earthly way you can make a withdrawal without making a deposit. It don't work like that. We ain't we ain't make the rule. We just trying to break them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go like and subscribe to Alive and Free TV. Oh yeah, they gonna do that, man. They gonna do that because they know they know one thing. The one who the one who orchestrated, man. Uh uh uh. Rashid, aka Dead Burden. Man, niggas gotta respect the man mind. Because one thing, me personally, I take that very seriously. Before I, before I must respect you, I gotta respect your mind first. And if I can't respect your mind, there's no earthly way I can respect you. You gotta win me mentally because I'm real big mentally. And once I peep the wrong kind of game shit, I'ma keep game play dumb, fall back, and move different. But when it's good, when it's good, I'm gonna jump all the way on board, lock myself in. Nigga, ain't no ride or die. This nigga, ride or live, ride and live, alive and free. Cause I ain't trying. We ain't finna do no dying like that. So we ain't ride or die on shit, nigga. We alive and free. And that both of them carry the same weight and mean the same thing. If you pull it, this this side. Riding is an action. Alive is an action. Dying is an action. Being free is an action. Mm -hmm. Same shit. Just a different, just pointed the same gun, pointed the different, a different way in a different direction. With different victims. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, that fool for thought, and I'm going to still help do the dishes. Now, talk that good shit. Lee Claw. Alive, alive and free. Go subscribe. Go subscribe to Live and Free, man, because 
we got the full course meal, man. The steak, the potatoes, the beans, the rice, the cornbread. You like juice, soda, water, or milk. It don't matter, man. Period. Mm -hmm. Now we gonna rock it out. However it's supposed to go. We ain't asking for permission or forgiveness. It ain't what it ain't. It ain't what it ain't. Yeah. yeah. And I see that wind and that owl cows just flash up on the stream because a lot of niggas in the game saying they winning, but nigga, what you done won? I know what I done won. First of all, out of by the grace and mercy of Allah, I want my freedom. So I'm a free. When I say the back end of that alive and free, nigga, I won that. And can't nobody argue with your experience. Nigga, I want the right to live now. Because there's so many that came amongst us that ain't 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 tallin' in the ground no more. They six feet, but not tallin' in the ground. And by them not being tallin' in the ground, they book closed. They ain't got no more fight. They 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 uh, they dead and trapped, not alive and free. So long, man. Look, average nigga gonna sleep six seven hours a day. When you wake up, you ain't got but like eight, 16, 17 hours to play with. Nigga be a damn fool to sit up and waste 30 minutes out of 16 hours on some bullshit. That that fast shame to turn thing into a rob. But nigga didn't even need a mask and a glove to rob you. Nigga, you just walked in with them bunny ears out your pocket. Nigga talk you up out of your time. Nah, nigga. I ain't finna get me, you ain't finna have me looking for the finger when it really the thong. Hell no. Can't that nigga put no handlebars on my head and drive me where he want me to go. Yeah. My, even when I was doing dirt, I ain't, I ain't had no head rat. Nigga, I had a brain. And I could think past my feet. For real. My job is to try to control another nigga brain to get him to do what I want to do. Yeah, nigga, we were master manipulators. And was a genius and was a craftsman at our art and skill set. Nigga, and if I don't hit you with the jumper, nigga, I'm going to post you up, nigga. And if I can't post you up, you might score, nigga. But when you miss, I'm getting all the rebounds. So you ain't got but one shot at the title player. At all. And everybody think it's a joke until niggas stop laughing. And they see that a nigga done advance and move forward in life and he's still at the same at the same turn at the same stop sign looking for a ride. And guess what? I'ma still take you where you need to go. Cause once you get in this here car, nigga, you gotta once you pass the shakedown to earn your right up in that passenger seat, and we're gonna start riding, nigga. There ain't but one steering wheel in here, and I got it. And if I don't got it, Rashid got it. So when I'm on the passenger side. Nigga, I could turn the music up, let my chair back, turn the AC on, and just ride, because I know exactly where we going. We don't, I don't give a damn about the destination, but I know where we going. And they're going to be on some live and free shit, so I don't give a damn. Nigga, put me in the back seat, nigga. If it ain't enough, nigga, I ride in the trunk. And y'all niggas go to trip, and I'm going to plug the speakers. We all riding in silence. I can't listen to the music. Can't nobody listen to it. But I'm still going. Yeah, I'm still going. Gonna pull my shirt out and use it as a fan and stay in the trunk. Cause it gotta pop sooner or later. And when we pop trunk, we ain't pulling out no pistols. We pulling out a whole different kind of weapon, nigga. We pulling out a thought pattern, a mindset, a brainstorm. Nigga, and guess what? And I ain't even gotta be no pot of gold at in our rainbow, nigga. We rather settle for an L5 and a handful of silver. Let me ask you this, Lee Clark. When you see the clouds, you know, what you what you think? What come to your mind? What what uh what you see? Well, you know, when Allah first created the earth, he gave the, the power of choice to the skies, right? And they refused it. Then he gave, then he offered it to the mountains. The mountains refused it because they didn't want to, they didn't want to, even though I heavy they they didn't want to pack this responsibility we got. 
we got a hell of a responsibility. So when I look at the clouds, sometimes I wish I could be a cloud. That way I was guaranteed paradise. I didn't have a power choice. I was created to obey command. And when the Lord say he created man, he had to put that word in it the way he created man only to worship him. He didn't say he created the clouds because the clouds going to obey him willingly or unwillingly. When he say rain, they going to rain. When he say come together, they going to come together. When he say flee, they left already. So they, they, I, I envy the clouds, I envy the mountains, I envy the birds because they don't have to worry about walking the, uh, walking the bridge of Surat on the day. That's the bridge that go over the hillside. They ain't got to worry about walking the bridge that go over the hillside. They guaranteed their space. They guaranteed they part of creation. So I envy that, man. Sometimes I wish I, I be, I literally be looking at animals, eagles, dogs, and all that to be like, damn, they got it made. Because they guaranteed whatever afterlife they got. They guaranteed that because they just only obeying the command. They don't have a power of choice. Why do I have to be the one that gave a power of choice? Why I couldn't just be a cloud and just rain when he say rain, move around when he say move around and obey the command? Why do I got to be one of the ones that disobey the commands, the one that go against the grain, the one that go against the universe, the one that voting against prosperity? Why do I got to put my ballot in the box of the crime crime makers? And I'll be looking at that. I'll be like, damn, man. Why? Like when I was locked up on the chain bus going to uh, uh, Galveston or going to another unit, I used to be on that chain bus looking at all the cars on the freeway. There's over seven billion people in the world. So why am I the only nigga that's smart enough to get on this chain bus that's around my own personal universe? Even though the chain bus full, but why was I the smartest nigga in the world to end up on the chain bus? On purpose. And I'm looking at the other cars saying, damn, man, I know they enjoy the basic things in life, man, that I'm being deprived of by choice. I chose this life, and this the rewards I got. I reap what I sowed, and I'm in the process of reaping it now. But when that harvest come in, then I'll be alive and free. But right now, I'm on this chain bus with this one bag. That I that that I, everything I own in my whole life in this one bag on this chain bus, looking at four hundred thousand other cars on the freeway, the people actually alive and free. And now I'm saying to myself, they know something that I didn't know. I was the slickest nigga. I was the slickest nigga that I knew, when I was the smartest nigga. I was so smart, nigga. I end up on a chain bus. That's how smart I was. My best thinking got me looking out the window at the other people that can't think half as good as I could think. If that ain't going backwards in the world that's going forward, I don't know what is. That's why now when I ride on the chain bus, I and, and actually get a chance to see one, which I did a couple of times. I just be looking at that chain bus and riding and saying, man, I could look at every nigga on that chain bus and say, I know exactly what they going through. And they probably looking at me with the same thought I had. And I used to say, damn, man, when the day going to come when I'm going to say I used to be in that bitch? And now here I am out here sitting in my car saying, damn, I used to be in that bitch for a long time. So long, I was like, man, damn, am I going to get out today? And then when I did go home, I think they were play, thought they were playing a trick on me. I thought I thought it was April 1st when they told me I'm going to go home. So I'm walking through the door looking sideways. I'm looking for the rabbit in the hat, the trick under the sleeve, or door number two. <laughs> and it wasn't there. And it wasn't there. So I'm actually free now. And I say, man, they really done tripped out. No, nah, they ain't tripped out. I'm the one who tripped out for putting myself in the position to say I'm finally free. So they weren't tripping. They just were doing what law abiding sentences do. Protect their neighborhood from the people like us because to us, crime was cool. To us, breaking in houses, robbing, that was normal. But to them law abiding citizens, man, these folks violent. These folks, these minister society. How we minister society and everybody in our clique robbing? Everybody in the, every neighborhood jacking. Everybody in their neighborhood, our other neighborhood packing guns. It's normal. It's a right to pass. This the First Amendment according to the streets. Everybody say the first law of nature is uh, Self perseverance, okay. So, what's the other 15 laws of nature? And that's a whole different topic breaking down the other 15 laws of nature because we got to stop thinking 
pass self perseverance shit because that get a nigga caught up. When I say self perseverance, that means they give me the green light to go do whatever I want to do. That like a nigga telling me it's not what you do, it's how you do it. Now, nigga, that's mean you telling me I can fuck with some punks as long as I keep my business out the street. Nigga telling me keep your friends close and your enemies close. And now, nigga, I got some real friends. What the hell I'm gonna keep an enemy closer to me than them, them for? Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Now, nah, nigga, I need both of my hands to work on the same accord because I got a mission I'm trying to accomplish. So what the fuck I look like not letting my left hand know what my right hand doing? I ain't never see a one-handed ba basketball player. Hell no. Hell no. He ain't going to make the lead at all. So we got to bust up these false theories and these false mindsets that nigga have, nigga, my charge it to the game. Nigga, how you gonna charge some shit to the game and you ain't got nothing in your deposit? You ain't made now deposit. So how you gonna charge this shit to the game? That's why we ended up with so much time. Instead of charging shit to the game, we want all out. We ain't finna let nothing make it. Nigga had that by this hill time. We ain't charging shit. That's why we got all that time we got. Nigga, that shit, we didn't have shit in our deposit. So when it's time to charge to the game, shit, we couldn't make the, we couldn't fit the bill. We couldn't fit the bill. Because everything we own didn't go past our pockets. Nigga, ain't now nigga came home. Ain't, I'm going to put it like this. Out of 100% of the niggas that locked up, it ain't 2% of the niggas that came home to some property that they bought while they were doing dirt to come home to. Nigga, our whole life and savings was in our four pockets or in the trunk or at the house in the shoebox in the closet that somebody else benefiting from. The same bro we laying up with. Now she's spending my bread on another nigga probably. That's why when uh, my wife asked me the question, she said, well, what if you come home and see me having sex with another nigga in your bed? I say, if that nigga not raping you, it's not this fault. Because he only doing what you allow him to do. Now, if I walk in and he raping you, then of course I have a right to pop his collar. But if y'all just doing something and you doing it willingly, you think I'm finna let this here situation trick me out of my freedom and I don't get out parole to 2037? Man, you sound like you were for the radio station. Because when I get locked up, you right back doing the same thing, probably with another nigga. And I'm sitting up here, gotta don't come back up for pro to 2016 to see if I could get out in 2030, 20, 2036, seeing if I could get out in 2037. And you ain't no telling what you did or didn't do. So you must be crazy as hell if you think a human being like that finna trick me about my freedom. Hell no. And I met you out here. Nah, I, I ain't the herb you're looking for. That shit don't work on me. Nice try, wrong guy. Hey, you see who done joined, joined in, huh? So. Lee yeah. Clark. So back to your questions about in? the clouds. You see Sir? who done joined in? Huh? You see who done joined in? Yes, sir. Who that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, say, say. You see me bowing to him? Say. I'm say, man. to that boy. See, you can't buy when we on the same level, bro. Yeah, we go down. We going to bump heads. Say. Yes, well, sir. We, say, we man, walk one thing I learned, spirit. man. Sometimes you gotta treat. Yes, yeah, sir. But sometimes, say, sometimes it's better to get the roses while you can. Oh, I oh, agree. Oh, I, I want to give you roses to you while you still can see, smell them. <laughs> Cause everybody real after they die. Ain't no, I ain't never seen no fake nigga dead yet. Ain't now Mark died in the history of mankind. And everybody was so good and so passionate. And now they getting them roses. Nah, that shit don't work on us. Weakest game to the strongest niggas. Mm -mm. So I'm going to get my roses out when I can. That's why when I said that statement earlier, nigga, I don't care who driving. Nigga, I ain't got to be in the seat. Nigga, put me in the trunk. And if y'all ain't playing the music I like, I'm going to plug the speakers on your ass. And we all going to be riding in silence. Now let me hear somebody spit that thing at us. Mm -hmm. 
Because we dealing with some niggas that know where they're going in life. Shit don't happen by chance. Nigga, we leave that up. We leave chance up to the rappers. The niggas with the funny haircuts. Nah. <laughs> Ain't nobody on this screen in our clicky pork. So you feed that shit to the other nigga. So back to the question you asked me about the claws, Rashid. Sometimes it's good to be a hater. Cause it cause the players is what they got the world fucked up right now. And it's a lot of shit I hate. I hate the wrong shit I was doing. I hate niggas taking advantage of the innocent. I hate bullets. I hate disadvantages of people that deserve to even scale. So when I look at the clouds, I be envied like, damn, man, I wish I, I, I wish I could be a part of that, didn't have no choice but then here paradise. But now there's some shit we got, we in a situation that we got to earn it now. And right now is a good thing because we in the process of earning it because our actions speaking louder than our words. And there's no nigga that should be comfortable when a nigga call him and say, man, what you up to? And he say nothing. That's the worst statement in the world a nigga can make. Man, what you got going on? Nothing. I'm just chilling. Hey, no, nigga, this ain't no, this 2022, nigga. We just came out of pandemic. Nigga, you got a war going on in worship. Gas, $13 a gallon. So how are you setting up doing nothing, chilling? At a time like this, nigga, how comfortable can you get in a living in a dying world? <laughs> And you want to become a part of the back end of that stable? Nigga, you tripping. And I ain't talking about a vacation. Mm. Nah, nigga. I ain't Fine. never going to be chilling. Nigga, I'm going to stay proactive. Nigga, I'm going to stay alive and free. Huh? Hi, hey, what's up? Let me ask you something this, Lee Clark. Uh, how your day going? It's going, man. Oh, uh, shit. Oh, I got what it takes to end of the day, so it's going the way that I want it to go because I'm moving and uh, shuffling in the right direction. So, yeah, it's in motion. Yeah, I'm going to claim what I want out of the day and try to make it a reality. Yeah, a lot oh, wow. Of you, man. A lot Say, of you, man. oh, wow. Say, zero, zero said something a few minutes. Huh? You see, we here. Hey, he said something a few minutes ago. I wanted to say something about. Go ahead. Uh, he say, he say, how can a nigga call and say, uh, you ask him what's up, and he say nothing. Uh, how can he just be doing nothing? That's what he do. Nothing. I mean, doing nothing is doing something, and they something is nothing. But what they doing is they identifying themselves that either you ain't they kind or they ain't your kind, but a separation supposed to take place. Yeah, I mean, you know, because the birds of a feather flock together. If he ain't doing nothing, a nigga ain't got time to be fucking with him. Yeah, you got doers and you got watchers. Mm -hmm. If you're a doer, you don't flock with the watchers. You flock with the doers. So a, a lot of times people be unknowingly identifying themselves. Once they identify themselves, we got to recognize who and what they are and categorize them accordingly. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, okay. wow. I received that with open eyes. I received, I remember one time you made a statement. I don't know if you remember the statement a while back in some years ago. You said something about the, I don't know, I don't know, I can't specifically say what kind of other bird it was, but you said something to the extent, <laughs> I'm going to just use the bird, I'm going to thank God. You said, you say the eagles, the, the 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 vultures can only fly with the eagles so far. Then they got to return to their natural habitat. You remember that statement you made some years yeah. ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they both can fly, but one of them got a distance that the other one can't relate to. Yeah, one of them tap out, and the other one got something in it the way it can keep going. You know, we similar, but we not alike. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I like the way you had broke that down, man. And that that stayed that stayed with me, man. That statement stayed. It was so profound and stayed with me, man. See, a lot of man, people can say things that affect you. I'm listening. Nah, I was just thinking that's how powerful words are. 
Because I know that was at least yeah. over 20, 20, 25 years ago. Yeah. 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 And that's one statement yeah. stayed with me. Fine. That one statement stayed with me. When you see that, what and I you could tell see? you, I could tell, I could tell you exactly where you said it. You said it in the chapel. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We was in there brainstorming. <laughs> we was cooking up a potion. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, now and we I, serve in that potion. Yeah. And and when you made that one statement, that one statement. See, when people say certain things in a certain way with a certain with a certain tone, with a certain look on their face, that one statement got the power to make me respect their mind. Because that ain't no every statement. A person make a statement like that, that made me look at him like, damn, this nigga knows something. Let me pull that thrill out and see if I could get some of that knowledge from him. And, that, and that's you always that been your role. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's been a consistent you part of your character. You always came with something good, authentic, something different. Yeah. Something original. Yeah, they, they say cre <laughs> creativity is looking at the same thing as everybody else, but seeing something different. And that's you oh, always wow. had a creative mind. Yeah. Yeah. More yeah. like more like a genius. That got to be true, because when I heard that statement, that statement ain't never left me. And I said, man, and, and I just snapped. I said, man, one, and I made a mental note. I said, man, I'm going to ask this brother, man, to revisit that same statement he made and give me some dialogue on that. And now the time presented itself and, and everything. And if you got a few minutes, can you dialogue? On that, because you was giving you was giving us a state, you was giving us some giving us some food for thought when you made that statement and everything. And, and I know the odds of you actually saying everything you say is verbatim. It's probably kind of difficult, but I know that mindset still there, still there. So if you got a few minutes, can you expound on that one statement? Because I do want a little bit more of that that I didn't get oh. a chance to get in over twenty some years. Most definitely, most definitely. Uh, yeah, I, I probably don't remember it word for word, but I remember the basic concept of what what I, the point that I was trying to make as it related to the situation. Uh, cause well, you know we was in a, we was in conditions where everybody. Yeah. We was in yeah. Everybody was in a condition where everybody was being pressed upon. And you know yeah. when you in them conditions, it's a it's a separation take place. It's kind of like in it even in working out. See, it's only certain certain types of people. Most people just work out for a look, but a few people actually work out for a performance. You know that's the difference between a show horse and a performance horse. Uh, you know I worked out oh, with wow. a performance. Yeah, I used to work out with a performance horse type of mentality. I didn't want to just be a show horse. I wanted to be a performance horse. I didn't just want to look like I could do it. I wanted oh, to wow. actually be able to do it. Right. So when you apply oh, wow. when you apply that kind of energy into what you're doing, uh, you understand that a lot of people attempt to do it with you, but everybody don't have the, the genetic makeup to actually do it. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like that motherfucking buzzard and that eagle. Uh, you know, that buzzard might have a desire, but he ain't got the yeah. genetic makeup because God just didn't give him that extra look. Mm, that he, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, every motherfucking bird can't fly around the world and lose three quarters of his body weight and still have the strength to keep going. You know, some like it's like with some people. Most niggas, when they go to squat 500 pounds, once they stand up off that rack and that, that iron go to digging in their back, they don't have that other switch inside them that say, I got this. They switch, fold down and say, fuck this. Man, I'm not finna squat. That shit hurt. So, you know what I'm saying? It take a special kind of motherfucker to fight through that pain. <laughs> yeah, it take a different kind of person to, fight, to push against something that's trying to push you to the ground. 
<laughs> yeah. That's where the separation take yeah. place. See that buzzer gonna go on and rack that shit back up and say I'm maxed out right here. But nigga, that <laughs> eagle gonna do it. Yeah, he gonna push and push and push and eventually some kind of way he pushed through it. Because he didn't stop, he didn't give in to the pain. Yeah, no, hell yeah, and that's yeah. that's in life. That eagle see a little deeper. The eagle see past the pain. Right. The eagle got that eagle eye. Yeah. Yeah, the eagle got a different eye because the eagle is the only bird that can fly looking into the sun. The only one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Same. it's a whole, it's a lot so. of birds that huh? <laughs> I don't mean to change the subject, but it's one more statement, another statement that you made that I want you to expound on it for a few minutes. You see, I say, man, look, I got a Rolodex to a certain extent. You made another statement. We was, uh, I think we was coming either from the gym. Yeah, I think we was coming from the gym and we was in front of the commissary or something and Miami was there. It was me, you, Miami. You made the statement to Miami. And Mammy yeah. said something, and Mammy said, man, how you know that? You just looked at him and said one simple statement. And I say, man, I'm asking his brother to explain this statement he made. You looked at Mammy and said, man, I got the experience high. And you walked off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the experience high. <laughs> you know, we can, yeah. uh, you know, it's kind of like we can look over a whole lot of shit going on in the society today. And uh, we can see through the situations against what people are demonstrating with their words, because you yeah. know it's kind of like when you got when you when you done been to a, when you done been on the battlefield, you done seen all types of personality types. So when them personality types start reappearing in the name of a different person, you don't know that person, but you know they kind. So when you know they kind, you can yeah. kind of project how situations and how they going to respond to situations and how situations going to turn out. Yeah, that ain't that same person now, but they got the same spirit. So I can, yeah. it's a high likelihood that he's going to respond like his personal, like his kind responded prior to him. So when you understand that about a person, you go into a situation or you come up on a situation with an experienced eye. So, you know, you can just see, you know, it's kind of like if you if a, if some niggas is somewhere in a parking lot trying to hit a lick, it might not have nothing to do with you. But you can just be scanning the parking lot and see how they sitting and anticipating the person that they stalking movements. And you already know that they trying to put a play down. So the experience I going to tell you to yeah. get out the motherfucking way, <laughs> get out the goddamn way and let them fools do what they do. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's what we navigate with. Yeah, you all the experience I going to tell you, man, let me see if I can't stop these young niggas from fucking their life off. I don't know nothing about what they got yeah. going on, but I can tell by the way they hunched up over there. I'm reading their energy. I'm vibing with them. I know these niggas going to do some dumb shit. So right. yeah, the nigga like, man, how you knew we was gonna do that? Man, that the experienced eye. You know, Losack yeah. is a perfect example of the experienced eye. Uh uh Taylor was a perfect example of the experienced eye. It wasn't no such thing as playing a buddy. Oh, you if man, it's some motherfuckers, oh, you just oh, don't we. do nothing in their presence. Oh we, yeah, oh we <laughs> they had that see it's certain laws pass. It's certain play pass yeah. but it's some people you don't even try to play pass but see you got to be wise to know that this nigga right here i ain't gonna even try him like that i already <laughs> know he hip to my bullshit yeah so i gotta respect what i see in him yeah but see a damn fool or try a nigga even though they know a nigga peep his his uh approach because they yeah. don't know no better see you got that why they say you got when the fold yeah, my battery about to die. Yeah, sometimes you can't execute your game. Yeah, my battery about to die. Yeah, I hey, close nah, that. Uh, let them know. Uh, yeah, y'all stay tuned. We got more. Man, to come. this man just finna start. Say, man, this man just finna start digging, man. 
already. It's alive and free to you. Alive and free, man. I enjoyed you, brothers, man. And every one of y'all have a great impact on my mindset, my train of thought, as well as my life. So I enjoy you, brothers. <laughs>